Hey guys, Caden here from techtuts.com, bringing you another video to help you make something awesome. Today, we're talking about 3JS. It's a 3D modeling library for JavaScript. Um, as you can see on the screen, I've got it running here in vanilla JavaScript. We'll go over this in a moment. Um, but essentially, 3JS is a JavaScript library that uses the web graph language to generate 3D images on the screen. It's very powerful, it's very awesome, and surprisingly, it's pretty easy to set up and use. Um, so today, like I said, we're going to be setting everything up in vanilla, vanilla JavaScript. Maybe at a later date, I'll show you guys how to do it in, say, React, um, a, another uh, library. Uh, but anyways, uh, we're going to jump over here to 3JS.org. Uh, 3JS Let's see what you can actually do with this stuff. Um, so this is one of their examples they have. And look how detailed this is. I mean, you can really do a lot. And there's a whole lot of examples. Um, there are a whole bunch of examples on here that are just crazy. I mean, you can get, you could pretty much get as detailed as you want. So I'm not going to show you more examples. Just remember 3JS.org. Of course, that's going to be down there in the description. But what we do need is from 3JS.org is their um, setup file. So if you go to their 3JS.org documentation, right at the very beginning, um, there's a link to 3JS right here. And when you open it up, it'll give you this big screen of JavaScript, um, the script file. Uh, we actually just need to copy and paste this into our project in order to use this stuff. Um, so once again, here's what we're going to make. It's a quick example. It's a simple cylinder. We're going to make that. We're going to animate that cylinder and also display its wireframe. Um, and so this will make a little more sense once we dive in. And so now let's jump over to the code, the basic HTML page and a CSS document as well. And you can just see on the screen here, I've removed the scripts that do all the magic. We're going to build that in just a moment. And you can just see the basic content there. And real quick, once again, here is my basic styles. R really nothing crazy. This is just the text that I have on the screen. Okay, guys. So like I said previously, we need to add the 3JS script file to our project in order to use all this cool stuff. So um, we're just going to real quick name a new JavaScript file called 3JS. We're going to link it at the bottom of our body tag here. So we're going to say source 3JS. Okay. So now, um, and I'm actually just going to close this. Now what we need to throw in here is what we had previously, um, this big thing. So if we come to the, the file that it opens up in our browser, we select all and we copy. We don't need this anymore. Come back down here paste this in here. It may take a second. It's literally, I think 40,000 lines of code, something like that. So it may take a second to copy and paste for you. I apologize. Um, but once that's done, go ahead and save it. And we can close that. We don't even need to look at it. Now there's two ways that we can do, um, the actual coding here. We can add it directly inside of a script tag like this. and do the stuff in here. But what I want to do is I'm going to extrapolate it and put it into its own file, kind of like we did the 3JS. So over here, I'm just going to save that. We're going to say new file. I'm just going to say example.js. Now we can do the same thing, bring this down, say example. And now we did it. Now we got it. Okay, but if you notice, of course, we haven't done anything, so there's nothing on the screen. So in our example.js file, I'm going to comment out each step that we need to do to accomplish this according to the documentation found on 3JS.org. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and paste these in here. And when I'm done, we'll go over each step. Okay. So here's the steps. Create a scene, create a camera, render scene, create 3D object, add object to scene, animate that object, call the animate to display. I know that's a lot, but we're going to handle it one by one. Um, okay. So the first thing we need to do is add a scene and three makes this pretty easy. So we'll say const scene equals new three dot scene. That's it. First step done. Now, of course, we're not using it yet, so it may not be super clear about what that is, but the next step is creating a camera to view that scene. So we'll say const camera equals new three, whoops, 
new three dot we'll say perspective camera now what this perspective camera takes in scene didn't take anything in but perspective camera will actually take some props in it's going to take your view distance your aspect ratio how close you can get to it and how far you can get to it so what I mean by that, how close and how far you can get to it, is if you meet the distance of minimum, if you're too close to it, you won't be able to see the object. And same thing, if you're too far away, you won't be able to see the object either. So the first thing we want to give it is how far away from it we are. And the second thing we want to give it is the aspect ratio. And the third and fourth ones are the distances. Okay? So right now it won't really make sense until you start playing around with it so just follow along the uh, distance is going to be 50 the aspect ratio is a two to one ratio the minimum distance is 0.1 the maximum distance is 1000 okay next thing we need to do is position this camera because a lot of the times when you're working with 3js the camera won't be positioned properly right off the bat um, and once again i know this doesn't sound very clear but once we get some stuff on the screen um, it'll make more sense So what this does is this gonna this is gonna put us um, a little bit further away from it so we can actually see the object because I believe right off the bat um, default values it won't display properly. So the next thing we need to do is render the scene. So just like before, we're gonna call three. Uh, we're gonna use a um, function that it provides us, the WebGL renderer. But then we're gonna set that renderer's size and then add it to our DOM. Const renderer. equals new three dot web gl renderer and this doesn't take any props but like i said we need to set the size so we'll say renderer set size and in here which just the width and the height um we'll say 500 300 next we'll say document dot body dot append child if I can spell correctly, a pen child, and this is going to be that renderer. And it actually provides us a specific DOM element. Jesus, if I can spell. Okay. So far, we've created the scene, the camera. We've rendered that scene and gave it a size and put it in our document. Now we need to actually create the objects. Now, the way that objects work in 3JS is they're called meshes, and a mesh is a combination of a piece of geometry and a material that covers that geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type everything out, and then we can go over it. Now, for the cylinder geometry, just like the perspective camera, it takes in multiple props. It's going to take in how big each side is, so top and bottom diameter size. The third prop is the length. And the fourth prop is how many lines make up this cylinder. Now, I know that doesn't make much sense, but it will once it's on the screen. Okay, next is our material. This will be new three mesh basic material. And what you can actually do is provide it a color. And I have a color I like to use on here that we saw. It's that green color, 8BC34A. Awesome. Okay, um, next we need to actually define what that cylinder is. Now the cylinder is the combination of the geometry and the material. So we can say cylinder equals new three dot mesh and we pass in the geometry and the material. So now we've generated a cylinder using geometry and material. Now we need to add this cylinder to our scene. This is pretty easy. We just do scene.add and pass in what we want to add to it, the cylinder. Okay, now the last step here is to animate. Now this may 
um, this kind of caught me off guard at first because even if you don't want the cylinder or the box or whatever you're making to be moving, you still have to do an animate function and you still have to call it before it'll render on the screen. So, so at first we are going to just display the cylinder without it rotating and then we can go over how to make it rotate. So this will be request animation frame animate okay and then we just do renderer dot render the scene oops the scene goodness and the camera okay now we just need to call this animate function for it to work just like so and now we've created the scene, created the camera, rendered the scene with the size and put it in our document. We've created our cylinder using a geometry and a material. Then we've added that geometry and material combination to the scene. Now we're going to animate the scene, which we're really not changing anything. We're just telling it to display right now and then calling that. So now when we flip over to here, it's not displaying because I didn't actually link this correctly. Let me spell this right. My bad, guys. You may have even seen that before. Um, I did. Okay. So here we go. So we have a cylinder, and now it doesn't look like what we had at first. Don't get me wrong. We'll get we'll get there in just a moment. But it's a it's a cylinder of that green color, and the scene that I provided the size to, um, injected into our document object model in JavaScript. Very, very cool, but it gets even cooler because as you guys remember, this doesn't look exactly like it did before. So what's different? First, we actually want to animate this. So if we actually want to change some stuff, we can tell it to change the position. So we can say cylinder position, we'll say the X, um, we'll say plus equals, just a very small incremental change. And then the same thing again, but for the Y, so we can get it spinning in more than one direction. So now if we save that and come back over here um, and refresh, wait a minute, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's not position. My bad, guys. It's rotation. Doink. Okay, so we've got it rotating now, and the last thing that we need to do is to display it as a wireframe so we can kind of see more of the detail of this cylinder because you can kind of tell when it, there's no outlines, right? So how do we do that? It's pretty easy. We just come here where we provided the color, and we say wireframe. True. Now when we save it, come back, there's this wireframe. Now it looks a lot more detailed and you can really see that cylinder. And I just think this stuff is, is super awesome guys. Okay. So earlier I said there was a few things that didn't really make sense um, until we got things on the screen. So let me go over that. Um, first being the position of the camera, right? So we can close this first being the position of the camera. Um, watch what happens if I put this to like say one and then save it. See, we're pretty much inside the cylinder. But if we go a little bit further away, say 10, that looks a lot better. You're outside of that. And remember, as long as you're not 0.1 or over below 0.1 or over 1,000 on your um, provided props here, you'll still be able to see that. See, if we were like this, say 10,000, whoops, say 10,000, you're not going to be able to see it, right? Okay, let's just put that back at 10. Okay. Another thing that we had that didn't really make sense, but now it will since we can see it on the screen, is how we're defining um, this buffer geometry. So if we actually come over here and take a look at that and watch what happens when I change this. So instead of 2, 2, and 7, let's say 1, 1, and 10. Different dimensions. See, so you're changing the... And these can be different too. Don't get me wrong. Like these can be separate values, um, make it a cone almost, right? So there's all these different things you can do. Let's put that back at one. Let's put it back to where it was, 227. Now the last part of the cylinder geometry line is how many lines make up that object. And right now it was 50, right? So if I just set this to 10, see how it takes away some of the um, detail and makes it kind of clunky because it's less lines making up uh, the object. Now, if you want it super detailed, you would go more. You'd say like a thousand. Now it's, this is actually not even um, supposed to be solid, right? This is not even supposed to be solid. It's, it's supposed to be wireframed. But I put so many in there, 
it looks solid, which is why this stuff is super handy because there's a lot of different materials, a lot of different objects, a lot of different scenes you guys can make. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned about 3JS, how to at least get it set up in vanilla JavaScript. Um, I hope it piqued your interest in this stuff. Um, it certainly does mine. And there was a point in time where I thought I was not a good enough developer to be making this kind of stuff. And I was wrong. It's actually fairly easy and it's very fun. So I encourage you guys to try this on your own. And of course, guys, if you like today's video, you can go ahead and like the video, subscribe to my channel to support me going forward. And until next time, guys, peace. Thank you.